everybody. Peter Greenberg here with you for another Facebook Global Live Travel Update for this last Thursday in October. Uh, welcome aboard. Lots of things to get to today. First of all, I promised you we'd be coming from a historic hotel. I wasn't kidding. I'm going to swing this around so you can see where it's from. You can see up on my, up on my back over there. We're coming to you from the legendary Palmer House here in Chicago, celebrating its 150th birthday. Great history here. I'll give you something in a capsule before we get to housekeeping. Opened in 1871, and 13 days later, it promptly burned down in the Great Chicago Fire. It was then rebuilt in 1873 and boasted as being the first fireproof hotel in America. Well, guess what? 150 years later, it's still here. And so am I with you today. You can always email me your questions today. You know how to go online and do that. Of course, a lot of you have already emailed questions in advance. We'll get to those as well. One more thing of housekeeping before we go on, and that is, of course, our new show, Hidden Turkey, is about to premiere. And in a shameless self-promotion, let's run that video again. Get set for a journey you've never taken. This is amazing. I'm Peter Greenberg and I'll show you a country you never really knew. Ooh, hot. From Roman ruins to downhill races, we'll see how surprising this old and new country really is. This is what I came for. There are countless treasures, all hiding in plain sight. And I'll show them to you. <laughs> Welcome to Hidden Turkey. And what a coincidence, it premieres tomorrow right here in Chicago on WTTW, on PBS. But check your local listings. It's going out nationwide and will be playing for quite some time. If you miss it, not a problem. It's also available on Amazon Prime and Apple TV+. Plus. Uh, I'd love to hear what you think about it. It's part of our series called Hidden. And our mantra for this series is no gift shop, no TripAdvisor logos, no tour buses, we take you to the places that are not in the guidebooks or the brochures that are accessible to you and things that will truly surprise you. So I hope you get a chance to, uh, to see all that. Uh, a few more things about this hotel. Uh, talk about history. You know, people want to know where things were invented. A lot of hotels had something to do with it. But where did the Parker House rolls come from? Anybody want to know? Well, it started in the 1870s where a German baker in Boston was so pissed off at a customer he just threw some unfinished rolls into an oven at the hotel and out came those very beautiful Parker House rolls that are still there today at the Omni Parker House. But that's not really what that hotel is famous for. You know what it's famous for? The Boston Cream Pie, also invented at that hotel. And guess what? A few years ago, it was, I mean, every state has a, I mean, every state is an official bird. Every state is an official flower and a flag. Well, Massachusetts now has an official dessert. The official state dessert of Massachusetts is the Boston cream pie. What about the Caesar salad? Some people thought it was invented by Julius Caesar. Huh, he didn't live that long. Uh, it was not invented by Cesar Ritz, the famous hotelier. He had nothing to do with it either. It was invented by an Italian chef named Cesar Cardini, who came to America, opened up a restaurant in Sacramento, didn't invent it there, then moved to San Francisco, didn't invent it there. Then prohibition kicked in. He couldn't make a living without alcohol. So he moved to guess where? Tijuana. And that's where he invented the Caesar salad. So drink up to that. But then uh, there's the Palmer House. What did they invent here? Anybody want to guess? I'm going to show you. I'm going to reach right over here and get it. And I promise not to eat it while we're on the air. The brownie. How about that? Brownie was invented in this hotel, and it was a challenge to the chef to do something different than just cake. He succeeded. They're still making the brownie here using the exact same recipe that they did back in, uh, in the 1800s, I think 1878 or 18, uh, oh, eight, excuse me, was it 1893? That's what it was for the opening of the Chicago World's Fair. But the, uh, there you go. Oh, one more piece of artifact I got to share with you. And, uh, but they have a museum here in the hotel. I'm sitting in the museum. In 1878, uh, they had what they called America's uh, biggest, most elaborate banquet here at the hotel. It was done to honor the return of Ulysses S. Grant, who turned out to be the brother-in-law of the original owner of the hotel, the Palmer, the Palmers. And guess who was the MC? 
Samuel Clements, otherwise known as Mark Twain. And not kidding, this was his beer mug. <laughs> there it is, still here today. Drink up on this, you won't need the brownie. Uh, so there you have that. Now let's get to some stuff of the news today. Uh, number one item, of course, it's deadline day here in Chicago. If you happen to be an employee of United Airlines, you know about six weeks ago, they told their employees, 65,000 of them, that if you didn't get vaccinated by September 27th, otherwise known as three days ago, you would be fired. There's an incentive. Well, just about everybody did, except for about 593 employees who now face termination this week. You know what Delta did? They gave their employees a deadline of November 1st, that if they weren't vaccinated by then, coming up next month, uh, they would then have $200 a month deducted from their salary to essentially pay for their medical expenses when, not if, they got the virus. Uh, there's moving, they're moving quickly now to get vaccinated because nobody wants to lose 2,500 bucks a year. Also, it's gonna be the private sector leading the way here. My prediction is by the end of this year, maybe January, you won't be able to go to the dry cleaner without showing proof of vaccination. Forget the movie theater or the drugstore, everybody. And what the private sector is doing, I, 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 you know the lawyers got into this, they're quote unquote encouraging their employees to get vaccinated. They're not, many of them are not demanding it, but here's the flip side. You're encouraged to get vaccinated but if you don't want to be vaccinated, you got to be tested two days a week, every two days at your expense. Let's do the math. Get it? Economic consequence. So it's moving quickly. So there's what's going on there. Uh, also, uh, I just was earlier this week in Miami for the annual Global Sea Trade Convention. That is the summit of every cruise line in the world. Um, and quite interesting developments there. Think about this, the capacity for the cruise lines earlier this year in June was about 16%. That's how many ships are out there of the 220 ocean going ships. Only 16% were sailing. You know what it's gonna be by December? 80%. And the sales for 2022 are through the roof. So uh, listen to the radio show this week. It'll be from Miami. We're interviewing many of the CEOs to find out what they did what they didn't do and how they're moving forward. And of course, answering your questions as well. Speaking of cruise ships, a very interesting development in the world of uh, unintended consequences. Uh, you may remember that in 2020, Canada closed their ports. So nobody had an Alaska cruise season. They were shut out entirely because under an old act called the Vessel, the Vessel Passenger Act, dating back to the 1800s, any ship not registered in the US had to stop in a foreign port if they wanted to travel between two U.S. ports. That was an antiquated law designed to protect the American Merchant Marine. It ended up killing the American Merchant Marine, but it's still on the books. That's why, up until recently, every Alaska cruise found its way to Canada on the way up, right? That's why they started in Vancouver. Well, with all the ports in Canada closed last year and this year, uh, the senators from Alaska and some other some other senators got a bill passed, which which President Biden signed, signing a waiver to that vessel act, allowing cruise ships to bypass Canada for the Alaska summer season. Now they had a limited season, which is ending around today. Uh, but a funny thing happened along the way. They liked the idea of not stopping in Canada. In fact, seven day cruises became 10 day cruises with extra days at sea, a very cool thing. And so guess what? Now there's a bill that's being introduced in Congress to permanently ban that or, or enlist that waiver so that nobody has to stop in Canada if they don't want to, because they don't want that to happen again if Canada decides to do it next year. So check out the cruise ship itineraries for the Alaska summer season for 2022, and you'll notice a lot longer cruises, a little bit more expensive, but I'll take days at sea any day of the week. So that's what's going on there. Airfares, not a pretty picture. You heard me talk about it last week. I'll talk about it again. My airfare a month ago from Dallas to LaGuardia was $48.20 on American. That's right. My airfare from Miami to where I am today, the Palmer House in Chicago, what was it yesterday? One way? Anybody want to guess? $61. My airfare 
if I booked the ticket today, it would be $311. Why is that? It all happened last week when the U.S. decided they were going to finally relax the deal and open the doors to foreign travelers who were, who were fully vaccinated from the United Kingdom, from the European Union, from Brazil, China, India. Guess what? Bookings went up 700% within 24 hours on certain websites like British Air. Activity on the websites for traffic jumped 74%. And at this time of the year, it's traditionally not a busy travel time, right? Not peak summer season. There's no more any seasonality with travel. Throw that out the window, which means you can't set demand or project demand or set prices. And as a result, it's the VFR traffic that's leading the way. Visiting friends and relatives. They're not waiting till next summer to see their favorite aunt and uncle. They're coming now, starting next month. So if you're planning your Thanksgiving travel, you better do it yesterday because they're not just flying to America, they're flying through it. And demand is going to lead the way. So those fares are going up at the rate of 4% per day, compounded. So every day you wait, not pleasant. So mark my words. And now a little word about my favorite topic, not resort fees. Uh, there are still pending lawsuits against Marriott and Hilton by two U.S. attorneys general, one in Nebraska, one in Washington, D.C., claiming lack of transparency, drip pricing, and failure to disclose. And while, those not, while they have not been resolved yet, hotels are going back, many of them are, to pre-pandemic bad behavior. They're not calling them resort fees anymore. They're sneaking in destination fees, whatever the hell that means. Well, guess what? The legal issues haven't gone away. So how do you get around that? Here's the problem. Many hotels are still not fully disclosing them at the time you make your reservation or at the time you check in. You may dispute that on your credit card bill. You, it was failure to disclose. And if that doesn't work, you know what to do. You email me with all the details because these are negotiable, especially when they're questionable to begin with. Now, I'm not denying the hotels the right to make a profit. They should make a profit. They need to make a profit. They also need to be transparent. They need to be not competitive on rate, which is not which is artificial. They need to be competitive on value. So if you want to charge me 40 bucks a night more to give me a towel or a seat at the pool, then charge me $40 a night when you quote the reservation rate, not when I'm checking out. There's our problem. Okay, so stay on top of that. One other thing though, let's say you want to avoid the, the resort fees altogether. Here's one way to do it. Use your points, your frequent stay points when you book your hotels. Generally, hotels do not charge resort fees when you're redeeming points. And if you got a lot of points sticking around, guess what? Hotels have a lot of capacity right now. Great time to do it. But until that legal issue is resolved, if they're not disclosing, you're disputing. And you heard it from me. And I'll go down in flames on that one. Uh, guess what? They're still fighting masks on airplanes. The case numbers are going up again. You ready? It's up to 4,385 cases of unruly, disruptive passengers, in many cases getting violent on planes. We haven't seen too many duct tape videos lately, but it's happening. And uh, now the FAA is urging even more action against unruly passengers. The airlines are doing it. The Department of Justice is doing it. It's everything short of the Defense Department. They're getting together. And anybody who wants to cause a problem on a plane by not wearing a mask and refusing to do so, guess what happens? Forget just the fines, which can start at $27,000 an incident, especially if the plane has to divert. It's not just getting banned from one airline. The airlines now want to share that data with all the airlines. So if Delta bans you, you're banned on everybody. Economic consequence again. And we haven't forgotten criminal penalties. So you know what? Wear the mask. And you're going to be wearing the mask till at least January 18th when that, that next decision date comes in. All right, so now you know that part of the deal. Now let's go to some of your questions. Hold on a second. Good morning from Denver to Evelyn. Uh, ah, 
Amadeus is watching me from Tanzania, one of our favorite places. We just finished, of course, our royal tour there with the president. Okay. Patrick Cooney says, good morning. Jane's saying good morning. You're all saying good morning. Ah, Lorena says the Palmer House is one of her favorites. Oh, you thought of me this morning. <laughs> Biscop cookies are on sale at Costco. You know what I'm talking about. You're right. And by the way, I was on American again. They still serve the, the diminished cookie. Delta, they're still giving them back a two. But American hasn't learned their lesson yet. I declared a Biscoff war more than a month ago. Come on, guys, let's fight this. Okay, thank you again, Florena, for that note. Uh, Terry says she's watching me from New York. I'm sorry to miss you and Nick on this trip. Next time, give me more notice. And Deborah Pratt says, my hometown, Chicago. You got it, Deborah. Uh, ah, sweet home Chicago from Robin to Carlo. All right, let's keep going. Uh, Steven says he's right down the road from me in Palatine, and he'll catch up with me at, at ORD later on, don't we all? Uh, okay, April says it's 70 degrees in Las Vegas. Uh, okay, Doug Lansky, trying to be funny in Sweden. Impossible to do that, Doug. No, it's a special on Turkey. It's not a Thanksgiving special. Okay, but thanks for checking in. Uh, okay. Hello from Chicago, from Geraldine. Ah, she just got back from Las Vegas with no Biscoff cookies. I'm telling you, we need to start a war here. Um, all right. Ah, Tanya wants to know what are my thoughts on traveling to Phuket next month? Guess what? Thailand is finally opening up, especially in the South. So if you can go, you go. My guess is the whole country will reopen by November, and that's only a month away. Remember, tomorrow's already October 1st. Katrina says, hello from Alabama. What are my thoughts on Ukraine? Is it safe to visit? It is safe to visit. Uh, I would go tomorrow. My grandparents came from Odessa, so you know I'm going back. Um, hello from Irvine. All right. Ah, Arnaldo says, you're at the Palmer House Hilton in my office for 10 years. Lots of history. Can you ask if Ken Price is still the director of PR? He was the historian for this class act hotel. Welcome to Chicago. I will check and get that answer for you. Um, okay. Richard Walden, say hi to United. Tell them your favorite nonprofit is United Charity Miles Partner. Richard Walden is the head and the founder of something called Operation USA. They do great work. In the interest of full disclosure, I'm on the board of that charity. They distinguished themselves years ago by going into Cambodia and Vietnam with prosthetic devices to help all the people who literally got their legs blown off by mines. When there's a problem in Haiti, we just had one. Haiti continues to have one. When there's a problem in any place in the world, they're at the forefront of aid. And of course, one of their partners is United Airlines right here in Chicago that provides airlift and matching miles. If you're looking to donate your miles, donate it to Project USA, otherwise known as Operation USA. Okay. Kelly Lott says, all flyers need to be vaccinated. I agree. And by the way, it's a marketing tool now. If I have a choice of going to a supermarket where 25% of the employees are vaccinated or 100% are vaccinated, I'm going to go squeeze the melons where there are 100% vaccination. I even want the melons to be vaccinated. Same thing applies to airlines. Matt Pickett says, stay at the Palmer House 40 years ago. Been a long time. You can come back now, you know. Um, okay. Uh, ah, Jane wants to know what radio channel is the show on? Well, it's distributed by CBS News in Chicago. Here it's on WGN, but it's all over the country. Just go to our website with the imaginative name, petergreenberg.com. You'll find the station listed there. And if you can't, there's a plan B. Just hit the radio icon anytime after 10 a.m. Eastern time on Saturday morning, and we stream it live. About 10.05, because local stations, as you know, do news, weather, and traffic. So 10.05 a.m. Eastern to 1 p.m. Eastern, every Saturday, it's streamed live. Okay, let's keep going here. Uh, okay, good morning from Denver. Hold on a second, we're gonna scroll back up again. Everything's coming in. Okay. 
I'm still scrolling because some of these we've answered already. Hold on. Oh, <laughs> thank you, Lucia. Be careful in the loop in Chicago. Don't walk around at night. Okay, fine. Um, okay, the mask issue from Kelly says, the mask issue is a distraction. Mask plus vaccines is necessary. Mask plus vaccines means freedom of travel. Figure it out. It's not just a public health issue. It's a common sense issue. And it's not political. It's practical. Practical. Um, okay. Wow. Okay. A long letter from Kelly, which I'll answer separately. Good morning from San Juan Capistrano. Are the swallows back? Okay. Um, April wants to know any word of the Egyptian Museum. Yeah, I answered it last week, April. I'm told with great authority, end of January, it's opening up. That's the GEM, the Grand Egyptian Museum. Well worth it. Hello to Irina. Uh, okay, what type of test do you take if you're vaccinated, departing from Paris to return to America? You can take a rapid antigen test. The U.S. will accept that. Doesn't have to just be a PCR. But keep in mind, guys, this is where the private sector is leading again. What's the subtext for so, Amer so many American travelers? They don't want to go somewhere and get stuck and be unable to get home. So the incentive to get them to go there in the first place is so much of the private sector, hotels and resorts, are offering testing on the premises with rapid tests so that you get it done and you get to come home. And should you test positive, check with your hotel directly. Many of them have a program to put you up at their expense for that 14-day requirement. So there's an incentive there. By the way, how many people have needed that? About 1%. But it's nice to know you have it. Remember, the true definition of luxury travel is when you get to keep your options. Not necessarily using them, just keeping them. So I like that. Um, okay. Uh, here's one from Brenda Lee. Love Chicago. Okay. Uh, do I have any... Oh. Do I have any information on using the National Health Service apps on a London visit? That's the British National Health Service if you're an American visitor. It's the same thing with using the French Health Pass if you're an American. It's a little more difficult to get, but you don't need it. Your, your CDC vaccine cards are enough to show proof of vaccination. Okay? Hello from North Carolina. Ah, Stephen wants to know, when am I going to be in Paris? I will be in Paris right now between November 1 and 5 doing the radio show, as well as part of our Travel Detective series. Um, okay. And by the way, all these countries, and I know it gets confusing, but I have to tell you this. All these countries that are asking for their own special pass or a QR code or a locator code, you have to go through the paperwork. You have to do it. But here's the bizarre part of it. They never ask you for it. The airlines say you must fill it out. Fill it out. Health officials say you got to have it with you. And then nobody asks. So go through the go through the theater of it, go through the drama of it, laugh along with me, but just have it. But don't be surprised if nobody asks for it. Um, so get your QR code. Um, Brian says if a person previously had COVID, it makes no sense to be vaccinated. Brian, I'm not a doctor. I don't play one on TV. I just play by the rules. You know what? Check with your own physician. Do what he or she says. Okay. Uh, Sandy says, just got back from Italy, and it was fantastic. Go. I'm right there with you. Uh, Diana says, good morning from Chile, Anchorage. We love Anchorage. I still go fishing there from the bridge and the river. And Diana, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Uh, okay. Here's one from Linda. If my flight is delayed and I miss my connection due to a passenger causing the problems, can they be sued? <laughs> I'm not a lawyer and I don't play one on TV either, but civil damages in a case like that might be interesting to pursue. You know what? I'm going to check my legal folks and find out if you can. I know the airline, if they, if they delay the flight, will take care of you. And they're certainly going to go after that passenger. Why shouldn't you? Uh, okay. Uh, Almendares says, when am I taking a cruise from the West Coast to the Mexican Riviera? Mexican Riviera. Uh, not soon, but it's possible I might do it in February. I'll let you know. Uh, 
Okay. Here's one from Pat, a report from Germany. The antigen test, remember the rapid antigen test I just talked about at the Frankfurt airport was fast and easy. It only cost 29 euros. Had to show my CDC card, meaning the vaccine cards, to enter everywhere before allowed to buy a ticket or even sit outside, not just inside, outside at restaurants. No problems and no discussion. By the way, somebody wrote in last week, and I'm dealing with it on the radio this weekend, but I'll deal with it now too. This is my pet peeve about restaurants. I'm going to say it again. I hate two tops. I call it the terrible twos. This goes pre-pandemic. If I'm paying money to go to have a nice dinner with a friend, I don't want to sit at a table that, which is so small that it can't even hold the plates. And I'm sitting six inches away from another couple, whether I like it or not, I'm now involved in their conversation. So I never make a reservation for two. I know I'm pissing off restaurant tours. I don't care. I make a reservation for three and Elijah just never shows. They have to give me a table for four. I have space. I can breathe. And that's what I did before the pandemic. What happened during the pandemic? Restaurants had no choice. They had to do the separation. It was lovely. And you could sit at a larger table. Now they're going back to the old terrible twos. Now look, I tip appropriately as if there was a third person there. So I'll tip 25%, not 18%. If a restaurant wants to charge me a premium for that table, I'd even pay that. But do not imprison me in a terrible two top. It's, it's insulting and it destroys the idea of a luxury fun dinner. I'm not trying to you know, turn tables fast at McDonald's. I'm talking about a restaurant, not a fast food operation. And the restaurant should get together and realize that the law of unintended consequences allowed you the opportunity to figure this out now during the pandemic. Don't go back to the old days. I will always be making a reservation for three. I'm going on notice now. You heard me, I'm gonna do it. And anybody else who wants to do it, do it as well. Then let the restaurants adjust and charge appropriately. I'll pay more. I'm not trying to deny them an income. I'm trying to ensure me a decent evening and space. And in the world of breathability and social distance, it's not even an arguable case anymore. It's a no-brainer. Okay, anybody wants to argue that with me, you know where to find me. Uh, Brenda wants you to come to Milwaukee. I would love to come to Milwaukee. By the way, I'll be close because when I leave Chicago, I'm heading up to Madison, Wisconsin. I'll be there for the Badger game on Saturday. And we're probably going to get our you-know-what kicked by the Michigan Wolverines. If you saw the Badger game last week, which actually was here in Chicago, they played Notre Dame. Uh, we were pathetic. You know what the Badgers' only offensive play is? Hey, let's run it up the middle. Brilliant. I mean, it doesn't take a defensive coordinator long to figure out, hey, they're going to run it up the middle every time. A little more creativity, please. I'm still going to go to the game. I'm still going to root for the Badgers. Well, the fourth quarter may be a little depressing because the first three might be depressing. There's always hope. There's always hope. For those of you who are Wisconsin fans, you may remember not that long ago when Wisconsin played Ohio State in, a, in an evening game, the number one team in the country at Camp Randall in, in, in Madison, and they won. Now, that was a game to remember. I'm right. I just want to go see the game on Saturday. Make a point of doing that every year. And if you've never been to a Big Ten football game, go. It's really worth it. Uh, so that was my pitch for Madison. <laughs> but you mentioned Milwaukee. I will go. Okay. Uh, ah, the Swallows go back to Argentina in October. Well, that's tomorrow. Thank you for that, Laura. Uh Okay, what's the must-do and go in Athens and Santorini going next week? Well, the answer to you is that you're going at the right time. September and October is the magic month in the Mediterranean. I was, I, I sailed into Santorini in July, and I refused to get off the ship. It was just too crowded. September, October, that's when you go to Santorini. Same thing in Athens. You'll be fine. Okay. Hold on a second, still scrolling up. We've got much more stuff coming in. Give me a second here. OK. 
Kelly says, I'm in London now. You won't need to show your CDC vaccine card anywhere unless the rules change. Maybe in London, but in the rest of Europe, especially Germany, you better believe it. Uh, okay. Geraldine wants to know, what COVID test should I take coming back from Las Vegas? Well, where are you coming back to? I'm not aware of any U.S. state that requires that unless you're going home overseas or you're coming to Las Vegas from a foreign country. Let me know. Uh, is Singapore back open for tourists? Nope. Singapore has one of the most ridiculously strict restrictions on incoming travelers. Even if I've been vaccinated twice, even if I've been tested negative, I have to quarantine for 14 days in a hotel at my expense and basically everything short of wearing an ankle bracelet, I can't leave the hotel. So not a pleasant situation. Uh, Singapore has never been known for a great sense of humor either. So just warning you. Um, okay. Robert says, I need to see the Palmer. Yes, you do. Uh, okay. Hi from the Oasis of the Seas, currently in Nassau. Great cruise experience. Uh, let me guess, Gary, you're about 40% capacity on that ship, right? What a great time to be on that ship. Instead of 6,000 passengers, you can breathe. I love it. Um, wow, listen to this one from Brian. Tokyo, end of November for a $230 round trip ticket. Still safe to go? If you've been vaccinated, you wear the mask and you play by the rules, go. Then go to the fish market at five in the morning. They moved it from the original location. It's still worth it. That's called Skiggy. You go there at five in the morning. Don't go any later than five and watch the auction. Whatever you do, don't hold up your hand because you've just bought a $60,000 tuna. But go for the auction. And then when it's over, you walk about five feet away, the most incredible sushi stalls at 5.45 in the morning. Who eats sushi at 5.45 in the morning? You do when you go to that market. You'll be glad you did. Um, okay. Um, here we go. Indoor dining from Stephen, my thoughts. I have no problem with it as long as there's space. We go back to those terrible two tops. Need I say more? Uh, okay, Roseanne says, I'm heading to the Galapagos and Celebrity in April. Any recommendations for my time in Quito? Yes, I do. Um, and in fact, you know, we did the Royal Tour of Ecuador with the president. So if you get a chance, you can watch that on Amazon Prime. You'll see all my recommendations for Quito. But Quito is also good for day trips by train, believe it or not, out to the countryside. Uh, so check that out. Uh, ah, Scott Walter says, best fight song in college football on Wisconsin. By the way, I have to tell you this story. It's a true story. A couple of years ago, I was invited to do my radio show in Ann Arbor, right? Home of Michigan University, University of Michigan. So I went the day before. Uh, the university was touring me around. They wanted me to see the whole campus, not to mention their incredible football stadium that holds, I believe, 110,000 people. It's daunting. And they also showed me the Carillon Tower where they play the bells. And when they play those bells, everybody in Ann Arbor can hear it. It's distinctive and beautiful. And they asked me if I'd like to take a tour of the bells. I said, sure. I walked in, just me and the university officials. There was a guy there who plays it on sort of a piano keyboard and each key is attached to a rope that's attached to a bell. And they asked me if I wanted to play the bells. I said, absolutely. And I sat down at midday and angered everybody because I played on Wisconsin. <laughs> okay, uh, we still lost. Okay, um, here we go. Hold on a second, we're scrolling back up again. Uh, Renee's traveling to St. Lucia in October, you'll be fine. Keep in mind, St. Lucia, Turks and Caicos, a number of those island destinations are requiring insurance as well, but you can get that on arrival. Double check that with your travel advisor before you do that. Um, oh, Katrina wants to know if I've been to an SEC football game. Roll Tide. Alabama is not a college football team. They're a pro team. Get real. But yes, I've been to a game. I actually went to Baton Rouge for the LSU game. Oh, my God. I went to Fayetteville for an Arkansas game. Oh, my God. Razorbacks. Ah, but it's an experience. All right, let's keep going. Yeah, go Badgers. Thank you, everybody. Uh, Renee's watching from Highlands Ranch in Colorado. Uh, Al Mandaris wants to know, how do I get a second U.S. passport? What do I need to do? 
Believe it or not, it's legal to have two U.S. passports. I have two U.S. passports. Why? Because I can honestly make the claim that I go between countries that don't like each other. So I keep two passports. I also use it for another reason. If I need to get a visa for one country and that's going to take six days, I can't be without a passport. So one, one passport goes in for the visa and I use the other. So the answer is you can apply for it. Just make sure that they understand the reason why you need it is because you're traveling to countries that don't like each other and will not be happy to see the stamp of a country they don't like in your passport. Uh, okay. Uh, oh, here's the answer. You're coming back from Las Vegas to Chicago. What kind of COVID test would be best? You don't need one. That's my answer. Uh, okay. I'm going on the NCL Bliss in November from LA. I feel comfortable as it is a fully vaccinated cruise. Um, and I hope it is not full. It probably won't be. Uh, but I'm telling you right now, ah, you said the credit card benefits cover trip insurance. Really? I double check the fine print on that. There's trip cancellation and interruption insurance. There's also medical evacuation and repatriation insurance. The only two policies that I like in that department are offered by MedGen Assist and Travel Guard for reasons I've already outlined. You should never, ever buy travel insurance from the travel provider themselves. The policy language doesn't always benefit you or, or as much as it should. And on credit card coverage, read the fine print. In many cases, your middle name has to be Murray and you have to have a snowmobile. I'm telling you, there are exclusions in there I'm not happy with. I mean, look, you get it automatically. Good luck using it. But I'd go outside from a third party vendor and never from the travel provider themselves. Uh, Claudine wants to know if I've been able to secure my French health pass. I haven't. But then again, I haven't tried yet. I am going over in November. I'll let you know what happens. Uh, okay. Now, let's go. I'm going to pull this up right now on my other screen. So we can talk about the photo of the week. Pull it up on the screen. Here we go. I love this photo. It says so much. Where was it taken and who took it? Anybody want to guess? All right. It's in Puglia in Italy from the port of Monopoly, taken by my, by a friend of mine, actually, Cynthia Randall. And uh, But I love the story behind the story. She says, this man was playing here when we strolled by before dinner. A few hours, he and the piano <laughs> vanished. See, it's all about timing. And look at the lighting there. Very cool photo. If you've got one that you think qualifies as the photo of the week, just send it in to us, peter at petergreenberg.com, and we'll post it here, as well as on our newsletter, uh, which, of course, you can, you can all subscribe to. And it's free, and it's not transactional. We sell nothing on it. It's only informational, which has the, which, you know, it's petergreenberg.com. What an imaginative name for a, for a website. Uh, let's go to some of the questions you sent in uh, from Scott. What do I think will be the biggest travel booms in 2022 and the biggest busts? Well, the biggest boom is already happening. It's cruise ships. They're selling out. They are selling out uh, because they have a very loyal base. They can't wait to get back. And remember, the cruise ships that were sailing, there are 220 ocean going cruise ships in the world right now. Only 16 percent of them were operational in June. 80% of them will be operational by this December. And by next year, by April, they'll all be back. Watch this space. And they're all going to be back booking left and right. Remember what I said a couple of weeks ago that Silver Sea put up for sale their 2022 World Cruise where the average cabin started at $74,000 per person and it sold out in three hours. That should tell you about pent up demand. Uh, Stephen wants to know, what do I like better, Malta or Marbella in Spain? And he's an avid scuba diver. I'm a big Malta fan. I really am. Uh, less crowded, too. Uh, okay. James says, I was wondering, we leave for Paris in October. Well, that starts tomorrow. We've even gotten the booster. What happens if we test positive for COVID at the airport when we are trying to come back home? Well, first of all, you're not going to test at the airport. Remember what I just said before? Check with your hotel. Many hotels and resorts provide that service to their guests, and you have to do it within 72 hours of your departure time so you'll know. Find out what their policy is before you even book the room to see if they'll cover you if you test positive. A lot of hotels will. Okay. Uh, Bill is saying, thinking about flying to Las Vegas for the World Series of Poker around October 26th, coming back around November 7th. I usually use Spirit for the cheap airfares, but thinking about those flight cancellations that they did, it scares me in booking 
everything in Vegas and then having a problem when it's time to go. Are you telling me you're going for the World Series of Poker and you don't want to gamble? <laughs> what? Look, they had a big meltdown on their scheduling last month. They've got it fixed. Spirit's going to be fine. All right? Uh, and the fair is right. Okay, Deborah says, New Orleans in October. Any pros or cons? I'll take New Orleans any time of the year. Go. But remember, social distancing. You don't have to go to Bourbon Street and be like six inches away with everybody with their go cup. There's so much more to do in New Orleans and Bourbon Street, right? You know what you should do? Go across the UEP Long Bridge to this cool re restaurant called Mosca's, right? It's it's very cool food. Or or go to Huma or how or Homa. I never pronounce it right. It's H O U M A. Great stuff. Everything's blackened, but you'll live. Uh, and of course, you know, go down to the central central deli or the central grocery right there in New Orleans. Not for the not for the beignets. That's at the Cafe Du Monde. You go to the grocery for the muffaletta. And whatever, how many napkins they give you, double it. You'll see why. Okay. Uh, Merle wants to know, when will St. Kitts eliminate the requirement to quarantine in the hotel for the first four days? It's imminent because Anguilla has already moved around to doing that. St. Lucia's doing that. Uh, but now St. Kitts, which is a smaller island, has to manage this, I would say, by the end of this coming month, so November 1st. Uh, now, this is an interesting one, guys, and I just wrote about this on our newsletter. When do I think Uber and Lyft will reduce their surge pricing? The answer is they're not. Surge pricing from Uber and Lyft, you know how much that's increased in the last year? 92% in major U.S. cities. I had to go in Manhattan from 96th Street to 63rd Street. I was running late at 11 o'clock in the morning, not a peak travel time. I, I called for an Uber. You know what they wanted? $63. That's the cab ride to Kennedy. And just then a cab came by. I canceled the Uber, paid the cancellation fee, and for $19, I took the cab. So this is what I wrote about. And it's a very interesting game you can play with Uber. If you're going to take an Uber from a highly congested area, let's say Times Square or an airport, and you call for the Uber, the price is X. If you go five blocks away, and call for the Uber, the price is X minus 25%. How about that? Nobody knows it, right? So if you're at, let's say, Penn Station in New York, which is 33rd and 6th, go to 33rd and 9th, walk three blocks, then call the Uber, voila, it's cheaper. Try it, see what happens. Uh, okay. Now, Eileen is asking a question. I should go back to the old days of Johnny Carson and Karnak. I'll give you the answer first, right? And the answer is when hell freezes over. And the question from Eileen is, how long does it take to renew a US passport? <laughs> okay, it's not that bad, but it's still eight months. There's still backlog over a million eight passports. Remember, they sent all their workers home during the pandemic. They can't process passports from home. They need all the equipment and the machines and the verification systems that are in their offices. They've now added people back in. They're back at the 26 State Department offices that process these passports, but still it's taking a while. Now, some of us, you saw it last week, reported getting back their passport in like 33 days. So things are getting better. But be realistic, count on three to four months now, okay? Because the summer crush is over. They're picking up the backlog, which means if you want to travel in 2022, you better apply now. Because otherwise you have no options. Okay. Let's go back to the last couple of questions before we say goodbye. Hold on a second. I'm going to scroll back up. And while I'm looking at this, by the way, uh, remember our radio show, I on Travel, this Saturday from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. Eastern Time, coming to you from Miami in the Global Trade Global Sea Trade Summit, in our, in our special cruise edition. If you're in Chicago, Come to the Palmer House, 150 years of history. I mean, look, Mark Twain survived this. You can too. Uh, and uh, amazing that this hotel is still fireproof, right? Hey, 150 years. They didn't do well in the first 13 days. They've done well in the last 149 years. So <laughs> congratulations. Uh, and I want to thank them for letting me uh, to use their museum space to talk to you today. Again, Hidden Turkey premieres tomorrow on many PBS stations, including... WTTW here in Chicago. And uh, please root for the Badgers. They need all the help they can get. And when you watch the game, 
and they start running it up the middle. Remember, I told you about their brilliant play calling. Just want to say it's not brilliant. I wish they'd figure it out. Thanks again for watching, everybody. I'll see you next week from a different remote location somewhere in the world, and happy travel.